say it right through, yeah. No? I'll plug his into mine. Just for the solo. Shepherds came to see the baby stood by his mother's side. Here laid the Savior inside a manger. Oh, what a glorious night! Oh, what a glorious night! I hear the angels singing. Hallelujah, let the earth receive her King. I know that love has come. Sing it out, Jesus Christ is born. Jesus Christ is born. Shepherds wondered, they couldn't hide it, told everyone inside. All were amazed when they heard how God came down on this glorious night. God came down on this glorious night. I hear the angels sing, hallelujah. Hello everyone, welcome to our Bandside gift service today. This is when, through supporting the Belfast City Mission, we reach out to other boys and girls and their families to help them have a happy Christmas filled with generosity and joy, sparkle and light. So, thank you to everyone who has given gifts. They will make a difference. Thank you also in advance to everyone who will be taking part in the service today. We're really looking forward to that. Remember, next Sunday, the BBC will be broadcasting its Sunday service program live from here in 
fan side. The service will start at quarter past 10. Folks are asked to be in place by 10 to 10 at the latest. So plan to attend. You'll want to be here early to get a good seat. Last week, at the start of our journey through Advent this year, as we lit the first candle, we remembered that the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome the light and will never be able to put it out. Today, as we focus on this second candle, we anticipate how people walking in darkness will see a great light, for through the birth of Jesus, a new day dawns on everybody, living in the shadows and going through hard times. This Advent and always, we will walk in the light of the Lord, for we believe that God provides light for all our journeys. On this Gift Sunday, we now praise God in the hymn, Light of the World. And now Theo is going to lead us in a prayer for our Advent journey. Bright God of starlight and moonlight, as we start our Advent journey in this year, guide us in all we say and do. Shine us on that our, so that our kindness grows. Lead us to be fair and helpful so that we share with others. Warm us with joy and wonder and laughs, laughter as we travel towards Bethlehem. 
and at the end of our Advent journey, bring us to Jesus in the stable and do, living for him and following him forever. Amen. 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 Thank you, Theo. Okay, so we're on this Advent journey and we're heading to, where are we heading to? Where are we heading to? Theo, we're heading to Bethlehem. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're heading to Bethlehem. We are indeed. And in this Christmas story, who are all the characters? Who would you say? Let's start naming some of the characters. We may have some of them with us today, just waiting in the corner to join us and burst on. So who do we have on our Advent journey? We have the shepherds. Do we have any shepherds in? Shepherds? Yes, shepherds. We have shepherds. And we'll maybe think about the shepherds a little bit later on today. Who else do we have on the Advent journey? The three wise men. I've got them on my tie. And the star. Don't forget the star. Because would they be as wise as we think they were without the star? So we have the, the shepherds, the three wise men. Who else do we have? We have Mary. Thank you. Very important, Mary. And really, really when you stop and think about it, without Mary, without God, nothing much could happen. No? Interesting that. Interesting that. So Mary, who else then do we have? If We've got the baby. Who's the baby? The baby Jesus. Of course, the main person, maybe. The baby Jesus. And who else do we have? Joseph, we have Joseph. Anybody else? The angels, perfect. We've got the angels as well. Anybody else? Oh, we've yeah, that's good to remind us of. We've got King Herod too. So Christmas is not all about the good side of life. We've got some nasty characters there too. We've got King Herod. We do indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jake, for reminding us of that. Anybody else? The innkeeper, the donkey. Did somebody mention the donkey? Did the donkey get a shout out? The donkey got a shout out. Very important person, character, animal, the donkey. So the donkey got a shout. Anybody else? Anything else? The sheep. What would a shepherd be without the sheep? Micah, you were there. I heard your voice in my head. It was the sheep, because you're the shepherd today, aren't you? wonderful. It was the sheep as well. Anybody else? Anybody else? Well, I suppose you know, although they're not named in the Bible, everybody else is involved in the Christmas story. All of those other people in Bethlehem, everybody that Mary and Joseph met along the way, everybody in King Herod's palace, they're involved in some way. And we are told that the, the shepherds, once they visited Jesus, went and told everybody that they met about the Christmas story. And I suppose, you know, all of us and all of the characters in the Bible had a different view, a different perspective on what was going on. They were seeing it their way. Because here's the thing, folks. We can't ever see things apart from our own way because we've only got one set of eyes and you only see it your way and what we're really all looking for is that light bulb moment when we join the dots follow the star walk to Bethlehem and the penny drops and we know what Jesus is about so let's do a little thing where we're looking at things from a different angle and see if we're all tuned up for Christmas. So, take a look at this one. What is that? What is that? A sunflower we're getting? Could be a sunflower. It's, it's an iris. Do you mean the... What, 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 what? Ah, I thought you were maybe picking up on the flowers. No, I knew you weren't. It is. It's an eye, isn't it? It's an up-close eye. And really what we want when we come to Bethlehem 
is for our eyes to be opened and for us to see Jesus. Or what about this one? What is that? Wow, it is, Theo. It is an underneath view of the Statue of Liberty with Lady Liberty holding the torch. And it reminds us that Jesus comes to bring us liberty, to bring us freedom, to set us free to be the people we really should be. What about the next one? Oh, what is that? Wow. Wow. It is, it is the type of melon we call a cantaloupe, up, up close. When I first looked at it, I thought, that's just pathways in the desert. It looks like pathways in the desert, doesn't it? And really, you know, we're all trying to find our path to Bethlehem and whatever is going on in our lives. Okay, will we give, uh, will we give somebody else a chance this time, Theo? Okay. The rest of you, come on, rise to the occasion. What's that one? Thomas, it is. It's the tip of a pencil. You know when you sharpen a pencil and you get that little edge on it and then it goes up to the tip? It is. And we're all, I suppose, making lists and writing things down for Christmas and that is a good thing as we make our way to Bethlehem. And... Hold it, Theo, hold it. We need to involve some more of the, of the congregation. It is a dandelion. It is a dandelion. And the dandelion blows in the wind, and in the Bible, the wind is like the Holy Spirit. And what we hope is that the Holy Spirit is with us all, guiding us all to Christmas. Okay. Right. Hmm. What do we think about that one? What do we think about that one? Sorry? A finger? Oh, it could be. I see where you're coming from. No, it's not a finger. It's Thomas. A lip? Did you say a lip? You're very close, Thomas. It's not a lip. It is a lipstick. It is the tip of a lipstick. And I suppose it reminds us in our ways that we all want to look our best at Christmas. Okay. What's that one? Theo. It's a little, it's the, the, the little apple stem. Christmas is about eating, it's about enjoying things, it's also about sharing food with other people and creating a happy community. Okay. What's that one? What's that one? What's that one? Anyone, anyone, anyone. Thomas. It is the tip of a ballpoint pen, and we are so happy that Luke and Matthew in particular wrote down the Christmas story. So, next. What do you think that one is? That one is, if you cut a lime in half, that's the center of the lime when you look at it. All of those pieces pointing towards the middle. And we hope that everything points towards Jesus at Christmas time. And bubbles, it is bubbles. And Christmas is about joy and it is about fun. So, at Christmas time, what we're trying to do is to get things in focus so that we see things better. What we're trying to do is get a compass, a way, a direction, wherever we are in our lives, to Bethlehem and all that it means. What we're looking for is for things that are curly and twisted to be straightened out so that we can follow the path narrow as it may be, to Bethlehem. What we're looking for at Christmas is to reach that place of wonderful celebration that the birth of Jesus means for us and represents for the world. So, lots of characters. We're part of it. That's a little bit of the story and what we're about. And trekkers, 
are now going to bring us their song, which is, Born is the King. Well done, everybody. That was super, super, super. Now, our first reading today is Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. It's found on page 1026 in the Pew Bibles, and it will be brought to us by Grace Wills. But Grace will be reading from the International Children's Bible. And this is the story 
of how Mary hears that she is going to be Jesus' mum. So over to Grace. During Elizabeth's sixth month of pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to a young woman who lived in Nazareth, a town in Galilee. She was engaged to marry a man named Joseph from the family of David. Her name was Mary. The angel came to her and said, Greetings, the Lord has blessed you and is with you. But Mary was very confused by what the angel said. Mary wondered, what does this mean? The angel said to her, don't be afraid, Mary, because God is pleased with you. Listen, you will become pregnant, you will give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and people will call him the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of the king, David, his ancestor. He will rule over the people of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary said to the angel, how will this happen? I'm not even married yet. The angel said to Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will cover you. The baby will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. Now listen, Elizabeth, your relative, is very old, but she is also pregnant with a son. Everyone thought she could not have a baby, but she's been pregnant for six months. Nothing is impossible for God. Mary said, I am the servant girl of the Lord. Let this happen to me as you say. The angel went away. Thank you, Grace. And this is part of God's story to us today. And now we're going to have a kind of a, what would you call it? A wonderful, dramatic reading about the Christmas story. It's called The Greatest Gift. And before you all get too comfortably settled back in your seats to enjoy this drama, I do have to say that there is a refrain that happens throughout uh, the story. I think it happens about six times. And that's when we all say these words together. So you're going to have to stay alert. So we'll, we'll run through it first of all, okay? So uh, we'll count down from three, and then we'll run through the refrain. There are a number of slides. So three, two, one. Greatest gift, the greatest gift was sent from God above. He's Jesus Christ the Savior King, God's greatest gift of love. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Do you think you're ready to go? The kids are. I could hear them, but I want kids. Will we make them do it themselves? Yeah, yeah, we're getting lots of nodded heads, so you're going to have to up your game out there, okay? So, right, Was that better, kids? I thought it was better. Okay, good to go, everybody. Good to go. Okay, off we go. It's getting close to Christmas. I love this time of year. I love exchanging presents with friends from far and near. I love to go out shopping and make a great big list. Of all the gifts I want to buy, I hope no one has missed. It can be quite a challenge to get the gifts just right. The slippers could be much too big or the jumper could be far too tight. But there's a gift I've heard about that can't be bought or sold. So, here, so come with me and hear the greatest story ever told. The greatest gift, the greatest gift, was sent from God above. He's Jesus Christ, the Savior King, God's greatest gift of love. Come with me now to Nazareth, and we'll meet Mary here. One day an angel came to her and said,
Oh, please don't fear. I have good news. God has chosen you, so you, you will have a baby boy. God's rest here, it's true. The greatest gift, the greatest gift was sent from God above. He's Jesus Christ, the Saviour King, God's greatest gift of love. Now Mary had been planning to marry Joseph soon, but when he heard the news, he didn't know what he should do. Then one night he had a dream. The special angel came and said, This child is God's own son, and Jesus is his name. The greatest gift, the greatest gift, was sent from God above. He's Jesus Christ, the Saviour King, God's greatest gift of love. They had to go to Bethlehem, for it was census time, and that was Joseph's family where he came David's line. It took a while to travel there, and there was quite a crowd. They searched and searched, and th so th they were very tired. No space room could be found. Then some said, some I have a said, place where animals are kept. The weary couple went inside, and that is where they slept. In Bethlehem, the time soon came for the special baby's birth. They laid him in a manger bed. Our God had come to earth. The greatest gift, the greatest gift was sent from God above. He is Jesus Christ, to Savior King. God's greatest gift of love. Some shepherds working in the fields were given quite a fright when shining angels filled the sky, lighting up the night. Don't be afraid. The I angel said. I've got good news for you. The promised king is born today. God's rescuer, it's true. They told them where to find the child, and off the shepherds ran. They found them and worshipped him that night, all parts of God's great plan. The greatest gift, the greatest gift was sent from God above. He's Jesus Christ, the Savior King, God's greatest gift. Some wise men looking at the stars saw something in the sky, a brand new star not seen before shining way up high. They knew it was a special star and journeyed on their way. They came to Herod's palace to see what he would say. They asked about the newborn king, and Herod was annoyed. He wasn't giving up his job to a new baby boy. King Herod's men then found a clue by searching through God's book. The king will come to Bethlehem. Now go and take a look. King Herod said, 
First find the child, then tell me everything. But he was making wicked plans to harm the newborn king. The wise men journeyed on their way, and by star were led. They found the children in Bethlehem, just as the Bible said. They worshipped him and brought their gifts, which sometimes so sound quite odd. But they were perfect gifts for him, this rescuing son of God. First gold to show that he's a king. Frankincense for God's own son. Then mirth to show this king would die to rescue everyone. Then in a dream, the wise men heard of Herod's wicked plan, so they went home another way to avoid that sneaky man. The greatest gift was sent from God above. He's Jesus Christ, the Savior King, God's greatest gift of love. Our God had promised to send a rescuer to earth, and every year at Christmas time, we would celebrate his birth. For Jesus is the Savior God had promised to send. He is the one who came to give real life that has no end. So when you're buying presents for the friends who come to call, remember that King Jesus is the greatest gift of all. Wow, 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 wow. Wasn't that fantastic? A big thank you to everybody that took part and everybody who was working behind the scenes to keep things moving. That was really fantastic. We'll give them another big round of applause. <laughs> and we are now going to rise and sing together uh, the hymn, What a Glorious Night. And Ben's going to introduce it to us first. Yeah, so I, I don't know how to follow that, um, but we've sung this the last two Christmases maybe with the, the children. We thought we'd try it with everybody this year, so I'm just going to take you through it, and then we'll all stand and sing it. So I'll just do one verse in a chorus, Gavin. So the verse goes like this. The shepherds came to see the baby stood by his mother's side. Here laid the Savior inside a manger. Oh, what a glorious night. Oh, what a glorious night. Okay, and then the chorus, yeah. I hear the angels singing. Hallelujah, let the earth receive her King. I know that love has come. Sing it out, Jesus Christ is born. Jesus Christ is born. Easy enough. We'll all pick it up. Let's stand and sing. The shepherds came to see the baby stood by his mother's side. Here lay the Savior inside a manger. Oh, what a glorious night. Oh, what a glorious night. 
I hear the angels singing, Hallelujah, let the earth receive her King. I know that love has come, sing it out, Jesus Christ is born, Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds wondered, they couldn't hide it, told everyone in sight. All were amazed when they heard how God came down on this glorious night. God came down on this glorious night. I hear the angels singing, hallelujah, let Hallelujah, let the earth receive her King. I know that love has come. Sing it out. Jesus Christ is born. Jesus Christ is born. Come now, all is quiet, a star shining in the sky. Below in Bethlehem, the king is sleeping. Oh, what a glorious night! Oh, what a glorious night! Imagine, 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 imagine if you had been a shepherd on that first glorious night. Imagine for you this was your first night being a shepherd. And all of the older shepherds, the wiser shepherds, the tougher shepherds were there. And you turn up and the very first thing you do is you put your foot in a big pile of manure. Oh dear, you have got off to a rocky start, or maybe better, a squishy start. You've stepped in the big pile of manure. And then one of the older shepherds turns to you and says, did you bring a pair of extra shoes? And you say, no. You didn't bring a pair of extra shoes. And uh, another shepherd says, well, you know, you're never, ever going to have nice shoes again. And then another shepherd says, you know that awful smell? Once you become a shepherd, it never, ever leaves you. You can go home and you can try and wash, but you see that smell? It never leaves you. And then another one says, but think about this, you'll stop the traffic. And then he adds, but not because of your good looks. And then somebody says, but think of the bright side. No one will ever hassle you in town because nobody's going to come near you. And you're wondering, oh gosh, what have I gotten myself into by becoming a shepherd? And then an older shepherd says, look, I need to let you know what's involved in being a shepherd. One, as you've already heard, you'll smell. Two, as you know, you'll ruin all your shoes. Three, nobody will ever come near you. And you might have to fight a wolf 
or a bear or even a lion. You'll be dirty and muddy all the time. You'll have to sleep outside in the wind and in the cold, in the heat and in the wet. You'll never ever snuggle yourself up in your own wee bed at home again. But then a, another shepherd said, you know, sleeping under the stars when you can see them isn't all that bad. It kind of keeps you humble. It makes you realize how small you are and how unimportant you are in this whole vast star-spangled universe. And then do you know what happened? Because that new shepherd was thinking, maybe I'll pack this in. Maybe I'll go and work in Tesco's instead with Julia and keep things going. Maybe I'll do that. And then, do you know what happened? Do you know what happened next? Well, then the night sky was filled with wonderful light and angels sang and shepherds were spoken to and they were given good news and they were told about the birth of Jesus. They couldn't believe it. Nobody ever came near them. Nobody ever included them. Nobody ever invited them to parties. Nobody wanted anything to do with them. But God did. God let them in on the Christmas story first and told them to then go and share the good news with everyone and not to keep it to themselves. And you know, after the shepherds began to get over the shock of it all, they said, were those angels talking to us? Nobody important ever even looks at us. We're just smelly shepherds. Nobody ever chooses us. But then the old shepherd said, but God did. God chose us. And you know, what that is showing us is that everybody, if they want to be, is included in the Christmas story. There is a place for everyone in that wonderful night of the Christmas story. And Luke is now going to lead us in an anthem. And it is, Luke, remind us, it is the first Noel. I can forget it, but you can't. to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay in fields where they lay they keep in the sheep on a cold winter's night that was so Certain for shepherds in fields as they lay in fields where they lay, they keep in the sheep on a cold winter. 
And now, remembering that God wants us to care for everyone, Katie Bradley is going to, to bring us a prayer. A prayer to say sorry and to remember others. Loving God of all, guide us by your light again this year to Bethlehem. Clear our hearts and minds of everything that stops us knowing you better and worshiping you more deeply. Bring peace in our hearts, in our homes, and in our world through Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Through him be with the lonely, the sad, the sick, and the hungry. Be close to children all around the world going through hard times, especially children fleeing from war and disaster. Help us to sing with Mary of a new world where the humble are lifted up, the hungry are filled with good things, everybody is treated well, and everybody feels safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, Katie. And just to begin to think about the type of world that Jesus wants, that God wants, Thomas is going to bring us a reading. And that reading is Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 55. And you know, Mary was so excited about the good news that she was going to have a very special baby called Jesus that she wanted to tell everyone about it. And she wants everyone to sing and to know about the, the better world that is going to come through Jesus. So this reading, Luke 1 verses 46 to 55, is brought to us by Thomas. Luke chapter 1 verses 46 to 55. Then Mary said, my soul praises the Lord. My heart is happy because God is my saviour. I am not important, but God has shown great care for me. God's servant. From now on, all people will say that I am blessed because the powerful one has done great things for me. God's name is holy. God will always show mercy to those who worship God. God's arm is strong. God scatters people who are proud and think great things about themselves. God brings down rulers from their thrones and raises up the humble. God fills the hungry with good things, but sends the rich away with nothing. God has helped God's people Israel. God showed them mercy. God has done what God promised to our ancestors, to Abraham, Sarah, and to their children forever. Amen. Thank you, Thomas, for that reading and for keeping the microphones right, too. Now, have the Christmas cards started arriving yet in your house? I am sure that they will. You know, when you think of Christmas cards, there are so many things on the front. You will have your candles, and you will have the robin in the snow sitting on the holly branch, and you will have the snow and the baubles in the snow, perhaps, and you will have the snowman. And of course, you will have Santa. Santa, Santa Claus, Father Christmas, St. Nicholas, coming in his brand new 22 car to bring you gifts. And that is all, of course, wonderful. But what we're, we're trying to think about today is, in all of the fun, 
remember Jesus, focus on Jesus, you know, because that's what we've been doing in church today, through the wonderful readings, through the prayers, through the wonderful drama, through the songs, through the anthem, through everything that we have been doing, trying to remember Jesus really is the reason for the season. And we'll now come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, in this season of Advent, when we travel towards Christmas, we give thanks that you are with us and we are able to feel your love. In this season, when the days are short and the darkness comes early, we give thanks that we can trust in your light and your light to guide us to Bethlehem and the birth of the baby Jesus. In this season when there is so much excitement, help us to be quiet sometimes and to enjoy all the signs of the wonder and magic of Christmas in the decorations and in the cards and in the lights. In this season of parcels and presents, help us to know that Jesus is the best gift of all and that he wants us to share gifts with others so that they can have a good Christmas too. In this season of getting ready in our homes and in our hearts, may we all find time to sing the song the angels sang, which says, peace on earth, good will to all. As we continue on our Advent journey to Bethlehem, to Christmas, to the humble shepherds, to the wise men, and the star guiding us to the stable where Jesus was born, hear us now as we pray together saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trials and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Okay. What I want you to do one last time is to give everybody a big, big round of applause. So everybody that took part in the service today, all of the singers, all of the musicians, all of the readers, all of the folks who led us in prayer, all of the people who prepared to get things ready. So give everybody a big round of applause. And the, the final hymn in our gift service today is Joy to the World, during which the offering will be brought forward. Sing. 
God of wonder and goodness, as our anticipation, expectation, and excitement begin to build on our way to Christmas this year, bless us and the gifts we bring today, especially the ones we are sharing with the Belfast City Mission. And now, may we be filled with the wonder of the shepherds. May we be generous, just like the wise men. May we be kind like Mary and Joseph. May we all be guided by the starlight of God to Jesus, born in Bethlehem. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the joy of the Holy Spirit be with us today, every day until Christmas comes, and always. Amen. <laughs>